and welcome back to another Bob Blast. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is all about the best art lesson, painting lesson I've ever had. And guess what? It was my first one in college, the art school. Painting assignment. The teacher gave us an assignment of painting a pear or a fruit or vegetable. Well, I did one, my first painting ever, and I was so proud of it. I couldn't wait to show it to her and say, what do you think of this? And she said, you really like that first one? Yes, I do. She said, good. Now go back and do it 99 more times. 99 more times, out of spite. Out of spite, I put my tail between my legs and I went back to my apartment and I did that painting 99 more times. I proudly went back to her with a pile of paintings, all looking kind of the same, right? And she, I was so proud of that. She said, well, do you still like that first one? Big smile on my face. I said, I got it. I got it. Thank you very much. Multiples. Don't do it just one. That, that's what makes everybody so nervous. I only have one time to do it. When you know you have 99 more times, you get a little looser, right? And you're throwing that paint around, having a great time. Now you're enjoying painting as opposed to copying something. We all can do that, but that wasn't as much fun. So obviously the more you do the same subject, your own personality gets into it and it becomes you and now it's your painting. Everybody paints pairs, but now this is your pair. Things like that. The same scene over and over and over, same subject over and over and over. And that's how I learned how to paint multiples. So this being one of the best of Bob Blast, I can't wait to show you the multiples and enjoy this one. And welcome back to another Bob Blast tie. I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is all about a series. I've heard this question from my students. What's a series? What does it make? Well, it's more than one of the same subject over and over and over and over. I want you to think about Monet and the haystacks. Oh my gosh, you did that like 23 different times. That's a series. But it was different times of the day, different times of the year, different color combinations. It's all about the passion and the interest of the artist. That's a series, as simple as, as you can see some of the series that I'm working on here, a series of clouds, different ones, over the same low horizon line, over and over and over. And I must have done hundreds of these. It's a great warm up, by the way. Then there's these smaller pieces of of just figures, stage characters that I like to do as my warm-ups also. But wait a minute, then there's these landscapes. How many different ways can I do landscapes? These are six inches by nine inches, over and over and over and over. It's a great way to warm up. Now, they don't have to be things that we recognize every day. You can start making things up, like my, my wacky f my portraits here. Not self-portraits, I hope. Anyway, so I like to do these crazy things, but it's a series. Probably about 50 of them. That's a series. What I always like to say, though, mostly, paint like you mean it. Not because you think it's a pretty little picture and it's going to sit really nice in a gallery somewhere. You paint a series and you paint because you love to do that series. And you paint it like you mean it. That way, you'll be able to do all these variations on the same theme. Let me show you what I'm doing right now. So before I even start a painting, you know that I like to figure out the five C's, the concept, the color, the combination, and all of that. For this though, the series is, oh, well, that's the concept. Pretty simple. Doesn't have to be this magnificent idea. And what I mean by that is I'm going to be working on a simple subject like pears, a simple fruit, vegetable, pears. It's like a family. They're all different looking. There are no twins. <laughs> you don't want to make them look all the same. And that's the exciting thing about a family of paintings that are from a series. Let's see how much different we can make each one and still have a good time of that series. Let's get started on the pears. I have here on the table things that I've already started but I wanna show you what the next thing to do is big brushes. These are 10 inch by 10 inch pairs, pretty simple. Some have dark backgrounds, some have light backgrounds. So the first thing I wanna do is 
decided to have more fun than this. This is my strictly academic technique. So the first thing I'm going to do is see the subject. They can all tell their brothers and sisters in here, but who knows what happens after that. So now this is what happens after that. There's some marigold. This is Holbein marigold. It's a transparent color. And I, so, so I haven't lost the original painting underneath it. I still have my darks and my lights. Because it's transparent, I can kind of change the whole coloring of it. I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. Same color, watch what happens when we have this blue, and this darker blue using the marigold. Again, a transparent color. That blue has turned kind of greenish, but it certainly pulls it all together, doesn't it? It has this kind of magical glow. This one, I'm just, just because it's a series, you know, why not do something completely different? I'm gonna put some opera, luminous opera on top of this one. Whew. Look at that. While I have it on my paper towel, I'm doing the paper towels today only because it's a little bit quicker. <laughs> you don't have to watch me clean my brushes. All right, I'm gonna come back into this. Boy, you sure can tell they're from the same family. What a crazy family, huh? All right, so we have that part down. Now I am gonna use a brush. Wet my brush. I'm gonna do some simple things here. Real simple. I'm gonna have a gradated background. Start to clean it up a little bit. This is called some negative shape painting, right? There we go. Whew. I like this series because it gives me a second chance to work on something that maybe not, hasn't worked out the first time. Come around here. And you know, when I know I have more than one chance to work on something or a theme, I become more adventuresome. If you work on one painting, you're gonna be scared the whole time. Say, this better be the right mark I ever make. Whereas, when you know you have a series, you have a couple more chances to try it. So we'll stop at that point right there. Let's see what we're gonna do here. Let's make this a, another gray, but slightly different. Just because it's fun to do this one. Look at that color, crazy, huh? And I also get to come back in and change the shape. This is, this is my Luminous Opera and black. Whoa. With a lot of white over here. See, I don't know if I would have ever used this color before if I hadn't had this opportunity to show this to you. See, pretty much the same subject. Think of Monet again, 23 paintings of the haystack. It wasn't about the haystack, it was about the artist's passion of getting involved in the subject that he loves so much. Let's try this one, this will be green. Whoa, with a lot of white in here. Let's make it really light, just so it's so different from these. And I do like to paint a series like this because it allows me to try different experimental colors I don't think I would have normally used if I would have had a well thought out plan. These are not well thought out. These are painting upside down for you. You see, and I can do that because I'm looking at color and shapes, not necessarily working on a pretty picture, so to speak. Look at the experimentation here. I am so not, even though I signed it, I've changed my mind. I actually paint this quickly too when I, I'm not being recorded, cover up my, my name because I can, because this is an opaque paint. <laughs> there we go. Now I want to, there's your shadow from underneath. 
Anyway. Why do we do all of this? So I can come back in and start painting larger pieces and larger. And I've done these all the way up to six feet because I practiced this series when they were much smaller. I hope this gives you some ideas. Find something you love to paint. And the most important thing is paint it like you mean it. Over and over and over. Thanks for watching and thank you very much for sharing this. And I'll see you at the next Bob Blast. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. You know, again, to be a better painter, paint the same thing over and over and over again. And it becomes you. You own it now. That's the best way to paint. And paint something you love. Not what you think is going to sell. You'll own it forever. Paint what you love. And your true artistic painter will come through. Thanks again for watching this Bob Blast, and I'll see you on the next Bob Blast.